Good morning, folks. My name is the Second Son, and welcome back. Just about every morning, I walk around this pond, not that you can see it, and I see plants I don't know, and I don't like that. So, every morning, I grab a plant, and I try to identify it. And we're gonna grab these white flowers as well, just because I think they're kind of pretty. The bush may be multifloral rose. In fact, that's what I think it is, but I couldn't tell you for sure. We're gonna take a stem with us and head back inside. My plant was indeed Rosa multiflora, or baby rose, or multiflora rose, or many flowered rose. Apparently it has a lot of names, but I wanted to know more, so I searched around. I found an invasive species spotlight, which told me a little bit about how it came to be here in the 1860s, and then it was invasive by the 1960s, and it's talking about alternatives for roses, and that's all great. Another quick Google takes me past Wikipedia and landscapers to the National Invasive Species Center. And it's one of these. I'm starting to really hate these. They're just kind of a middleman in a long line of poorly designed middlemen. But finally, mercifully, I find this. I feel like this was written by maybe a grad student or an undergrad, judging by the Introduced Species Summary Project as the title. But this is what I wanted. This is effectively somebody gathering a pile of facts and sticking them on a PDF. This, this is what I need. This website immediately becomes useful. Uh, it tells me about the early uses for multifloral rose, which it starts out just as rootstock for cultivated roses. But immediately it starts taking on other uses. The United States Soil Conservation Service strongly recommended planting this species to prevent erosion. Concurrently, the nursery industry was advertising it as the perfect solution to fence in cattle and create a natural crash barrier along highways. People were making up excuses left and right to stick this thing in the ground. And then in the 60s, after it became known as an invasive, there were still wildlife groups advertising this plant as a good source of food and shelter for birds and fauna. And if it wasn't bad enough that we planted this plant at every possible junction, once it's in the ground, it can produce up to 500,000 seeds. What? And those seeds can live in the soil for up to 15 years. As for eradication, there's several methods. Mowing consistently for two to four years, three to six times a year, seems to be the best way for individuals to get rid of it. There's biological controls, such as diseases, which might kill it, but those are also deadly to native roses, so eh. The most effective seem to be herbicides, but I don't know if you want to spray cancer on the ground in order to get rid of a plant. Anyway, my name's a Second Son, and we'll see you tomorrow with another plant. Goodbye for now.